Hello, sci-fi and dystopian future fans. My name is Jess, and this is CamCat Unwrapped. You've been listening to Under the Heavens by Ruth Fox, and today we have the author with us for a virtual interview. Ruth, thank you so much for being here. No problem. So excited to have you on. Um, Why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about yourself? Um, So I live in Australia um, in a regional town called Ballarat. Um, And yeah, I have three sons and two cats who are (laughs) very happy to jump on my desk all the time so you might see see more of them (laughs) amazing we love animals here (laughs) uh well thank you so much we're so glad to have you on the show uh thank you also for joining us all the way from australia because i know that there's a a huge time difference and it is a very different time for you right now than it is for us (laughs) it's about three o'clock in the afternoon right now i know it's morning for you so We really appreciate you being able to come on. And I'm really looking forward to hearing all about your inspiration for your book. What drew you to the sci-fi genre? It's it's got YA themes. It's got, you know, whales. Are you interested in whales? I'm just so curious to hear all about your book. (laughs) Um, So I guess sci-fi for me, um, I fell in love with sci-fi when I was about maybe 10. Um, when I actually started watching Star Trek Voyager because that was when it premiered. And um, yeah, that really got me hooked um, because, I mean, I was already interested in space. Um, My mom has lots and lots of um, like sky and telescope magazines. Um, She was always very encouraging on the science front. (laughs) Um, But when I started watching that show, it was like, um partly because you know it's like it's unexplored territory um which is great fodder for the imagination (laughs) um but i also really liked that um the captain of the starship was a female which was like fantastic because yeah you um i'm sure there are other shows but that one was you know kind of the forefront of you know captain catherine janeway um and i know she's inspired a lot of um, women to actually go into science, <laughs> even though she's a fictional character, which is <laughs> pretty amazing. Um, yeah, so that was kind of the beginning of my love for sci-fi. Um, and I don't know that there were many young adult sci-fi books around at that point. Um, we we're talking about 1996. So, um, yeah, so I was, um, yeah, I kind of started to write a few little very badly written <laughs> um, science fiction and fantasy novels because I was interested in fantasy as well. Um, yeah, I guess it kind of started from there and <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's really cool that it's been a part of your life for so long. And, and you're right, even if there were other things out there, I think that a lot of people drew inspiration even from fictional characters just seeing a strong female lead was so 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 great for so many people so I love that you were able to draw some inspiration from that as well that's so nice um (laughs) yeah I mean obviously there there's your connection to sci-fi but I'm this book is got all sorts of different themes in there. And I mentioned the whales a minute ago. And I'm wondering, do you have an interest in whales specifically? What made you choose whales as the subject for this transfer to New Eden? Um, So I've always been interested in whales. Um, I didn't particularly know a lot about them or anything. But in turn, I mean, I'm I'm very environmentally conscious. um, And I love animals. I'm vegetarian. so all animals are of interest to me, but um, there's something about whales because they're, they're kind of, I mean, they're very foreign to us. Um, and, but also th- there's kind of this um, strange connection there as well, where we're, I think most people would find them fascinating because um, you don't see them every day. <laughs> and some of them are, incredibly massive blue whales are really big animals um and also you know kind of the 
whale song and stuff like that, which people use to go to sleep, try and go to sleep. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's just, a, I find them incredibly fascinating creatures um, and almost, almost on the edge of being science fiction creatures themselves, because, um, you know, that just the foreignness, the difference between humans and whales is, um, yeah. <laughs> so interesting Hopefully that yeah. makes sense. no absolutely <laughs> it, it really does and and yeah I think they're such fascinating creatures and it's so fun because I feel like I had never heard of a book being written where it wasn't just like they're um either just a, a short cameo or it's like an actual book about the history of, or you know an actual book about whales in the real world like a biology textbook yeah. or something so I thought it was so special that they had this beautiful feature in your book and you know before we delve even more into everything else you have your main character Kim who lives this double life as Hannah and what made you decide to kind of have her living a double life versus you know she just be on this um, mission with the objective of changing the course of the ship um, well, I think, I think the main thing for most stories is you have to have a conflict. <laughs> um, so yeah, she, she needed a conflict, but it was kind of there from the start. Um, I, I kind of wanted there to be a mystery about her. Like she's not just, uh, you know, someone who's, you know, won this, won this opportunity and, um, she's out there. She's got to have something more and something deeper. Um, and I do kind of, I do this with a lot of my characters is I, I tend to veer towards the dark side. So, um, yeah, if, if there's a chance to create some kind of angst or guilt or, or something like that, it, it tends to happen. Yeah. But I think that makes the character so much, it, it really adds a depth to the character. It makes it more believable, more relatable even. So I thought that was just such a, a cool thing to start a story with this character who already are like, I don't really know who this person is, but I can see where, like what, I, I understand the setting and I'm curious yeah. to know more about this person. So it was just really, really, really cool for me anyway. And I'm sure for our readers as well. I'm curious if, you know, I mean, granted, this book is in a lot of ways, Kim in, I don't want to say isolation because obviously she's not, she definitely has travel companions. Um, but were your characters inspired by people, you know, uh, do you have to do a lot of, uh, research I guess into whales to kind of learn their personalities and interactions what kind of things in your real life inspired your story I don't think the characters are particularly based on anyone in particular um I think they take kind of little traits from people that I know um but um yeah I don't I don't I did try writing um people that I know into a story at one point and it just didn't work. <laughs> um, yeah, I ended up, I, I hated the characters <laughs> um, and I couldn't seem to get much of a story uh, like going. Um, so I think, it, uh, yeah, I tend to take little bits and pieces, um, you know, like, um, and sometimes the characters will kind of, they'll kind of almost write themselves, um, you know, just, from what's happening in the story, how they, how they'll react to things. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, um, tricky one for me because I don't really know how to describe it. Well, you're not the first person also who said that, you know, I felt like I wouldn't be doing my friends and family justice to include them <laughs> in one of my stories. So I totally understand yeah. what you mean, but I loved what you had said earlier on about how, your mom really cultivated a love for science in you and I just w wondered maybe if if little pieces of her or you, even of yourself found their ways into Kim slash Hannah yeah I, I I would like to think that I'm like Kim <laughs> that I'm you know brave and capable of you know tackling challenges like that um I don't think I'd cope really <laughs> very well at all though <laughs> 
I get that. I also like to fancy <laughs> myself someone who's brave. And I think in a similar situation, not that I could even fathom being myself in a similar situation, <laughs> but I think I would be someone to choke. But I like to think that I would be brave. So yeah. I love that. I love that you kind of, it seems like maybe put a little bit of your own braveness into her. So that's really <laughs> special and sweet. Uh, what was your writing process like for the story? Did you feel like, do you feel like you're more of a planner or, you know, someone who makes sure that they have every piece of the story together as they're going? Or we like to call them pants or someone who just kind of is like, all right, here we go. Flying by the seat of their pants. Let's see where the story takes me. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely a pants. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I did a lot of the planning side of thing when I was well when I was in uni because they're like you know structure your story and um, stuff like that but um, that didn't work for me um, I I would get bored with those stories because I already know what you know well I have to do this bit now and stuff like that um, yeah so I find it it's way more fun if you just sit down and write it all out <laughs> even if it's not right it's like you know just get it down um get to the end of it and very often you'll kind of come across this um you know this moment where it's like oh that's what this is all about <laughs> um or you know that's why i put that in there it's because it means that they'll end up here <laughs> yeah um so yeah i definitely just i just write it all down and yeah let's see what happens yeah I love that and some of the other authors I talked to who were similarly pantsers said similar <laughs> things like oh I added this into the story earlier just you know because I liked the idea of this happening in that moment but it was so perfect when it came full circle later and, and contributed to this moment and I am so yeah. so glad that you were able to have moments like that as well um, you had also yeah. mentioned that you had uh, maybe written some stories from when you first developed an interest in um, the sci-fi genre and were watching Star Trek Voyager and all of that. Uh, were you writing stories at 10? And what was your process in writing those stories? Were you more of a planner or a pantser then? Um, yeah, I was, I was writing back then. Um but I, I don't think I ever finished anything that I started because um, I, I didn't, yeah, exactly. But I, I also, I didn't know how to, you know, write a story, I guess. I didn't know how to get to an ending point. Um, I'd probably get maybe a third of the way through and then I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so um, it wasn't until I got to, I went to uni and I studied, um, a diploma and a degree in professional writing and editing. Um, and that was when I kind of really thought um, that, oh, hey, I could actually be a writer. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I could actually get something published one day. And um, yeah, that was, I think, being around people who had similar um, interests and yeah kind of just in, inspired me to get to the point where I'm like okay it has a beginning a middle and an end now and yeah I've got a 70,000 word novel um and the first time that I actually got to that ending point I mean it was it was still a pretty awful novel but um it was the fact that you know I've written this many words it's novel length and um yeah I think I can do this that must have been such a I, I don't say relieving, but almost relieving feeling of like, well, oh my gosh, I, oh good. Okay. Yeah, it definitely was. And I remember I turned around to my dad and I was like, Hey, I just finished a novel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. That must've yeah, just been so liberating too, to be like, yeah. wow, I can actually do this thing. And it, it seems like you've always had a passion for it too, writing stories that young and even going to school for it, because a lot of people love mm -hmm. to write you know, love to write or even write little short stories or even get to the point that you do where you get about a third of the way through and think, oh, I'm stuck now. I don't know what to do and and yeah. have this little maybe underlying passion for it, but don't go to school for it. But the fact that you went to school for it obviously means it has a very special place in your heart. So 
That's yeah, so amazing definitely. that you were able to <laughs> follow through with it and everything. So yeah. you must have known then at a young age, you know, I want to, I want to be a writer. I did know that. I didn't know that I would be a writer as a profession um, <laughs> because I was always, um, my parents were artists and um, the art world is hard and financially you will pretty much always struggle. <laughs> um, so I was always of the opinion that, you know, art is something that you'll do, but it won't be your main thing. Um, so yeah, I went, I, I've had uh, held other jobs, um, but I found that they're, they're not fulfilling. <laughs> um, and I, I would always um, be, you know, I'd be getting through the day so that I can get home and write. Um, yeah, obviously, um, yeah, financially I needed the other jobs, <laughs> but, um, yeah, luckily now, um, I've got a husband who is very supportive and, um, yeah, he, <laughs> he's very much, you sit there and keep writing. So yeah, it's at least for now, that's, that's what I'm doing. Oh, that's great. So you get to be essentially a full-time writer now. Yeah, yeah. In between being a mum, um, that's what I do. So, um, yeah, so a couple of hours a day, I'll, um, I devote to writing. So, yeah. Yes, well, we all know, you know, not from experience in my case, but <laughs> know that it is a full-time job to be a mom. So it is. Yeah. power <laughs> to you for being able to do both because <laughs> I know my mom, now that I'm an adult, is able to do all of the things that she was passionate about and even make money doing those things. But I know yeah. grow, growing up, that was not an easy thing for her to juggle. So, no, so no, good for you no. for being able to. That's really fantastic. <laughs> and um, yeah. so do you have other books as well? I know that you have the sequel to Under the Heavens coming out very soon. Um, but aside from that, we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Is there anything, are there other books that you've had published? Yeah. Um, so my first trilogy was published um the first one was published in 2012 um, by an Australian publisher. Um, and yeah, that's called uh, The City of Silver Light. Um, and the other two are um, Across the Bridges and uh, The Wall Between the Worlds. Um, and they, they're fantasy young adult novels. Um, and yeah, so that was my first publishing experience and it was a really good one <laughs> um yeah and a few years later I got uh another trilogy published which is called Monster Boy um yeah so that that's published through a different American publisher called Widow Publishing that's so fun and then so I mean the first one you had said was more fantasy what about monster boy the the trilogy there is that also a little bit more fantasy oriented it, it is fantasy yeah um so basically it's a family who adopts a monster <laughs> um yeah so it's a middle grade novel um but it's also one of my favorite things that i've written so <laughs> such a fun concept i love that <laughs> Well, that's so great. I mean, that to me sounds like true, you know, professional writing. If you're able to get so many things published and now I, is this going to be your third? Are you intending for it to be a trilogy as well? Yeah, um, I wasn't at the start. Yeah, but it, it seems like, yeah, everything's going to be a trilogy. <laughs> so <laughs> Sometimes things come in threes for a reason. They just raise yeah, a nice round sure. number. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so great. Okay, so you're saying after New Eden, there will be a third? There will be a third, yes. That's so yeah. exciting. Well, we will get again into that a little bit later. But for now, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh, the hardest scene for you to write, being that you, it seems like, have a large background in fantasy writing. Was it harder for you to do more of the sci-fi things? Or, uh, well, yeah, what was the hardest part about writing for you um yeah probably the science side of things was pretty hard um because I mean a lot of the science is stuff that isn't actually possible yet <laughs> or you know it's it's theorized but hasn't been you know 
um, achieved. So, yeah, it's um, it was difficult to kind of wrap my head around some of the concepts, um, particularly things like um, you know the quantum quantum uh, side of things, which I still don't fully understand. <laughs> um, yeah, it, um, but um, there was one thing that my, uh, I had a screenwriting teacher at uni um, and she worked on a TV show um, and it was uh, kind of a, a cop TV show and she was like, um, they'd, have, they'd have consultants, but um, the, the writers were often told, you know, um, go to the consultant. If the consultant doesn't say that that thing is possible, find someone who will say that it's possible. <laughs> um, and yeah so that was kind of how they um how they wrote the tv show so I, I kind of kept that idea in the back of my mind you know just find a way to make it possible so yeah <laughs> oh i think that's yeah. great advice you know everything's impossible until it is and you know everything is impossible until it's possible so yeah exactly yeah and that's that's why fiction is so good because you know it, it's fiction so you can you can take some some license with the truth um but uh yeah i, I did a lot of googling for the science um that was yeah a lifesaver for me um yeah you type a question into google you will get some kind of answer so <laughs> i was going to ask you what kind of research you did into the science of it all because yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a very heavily science-based book. And, you know, spaceships are something that we're, we don't currently have, like, a, a, I mean, I guess we have, you know, rocket ships, but we don't really have anything yeah. close to that in our real world. So did you feel like you were doing a lot of that, plugging things into Google to get information about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, I mean... Uh, I read a lot of sci-fi as well. So it's like, you know, um, and TV shows and movies. So I guess it's all kind of feeding into, yeah, my, my knowledge of what might be possible and how things might work. Sure. Yeah. And, and another, I love that you said um, that it's fiction. You can kind of bend it how you want to. We had another sci-fi author of ours in, um, gosh, a couple months ago now and, he was like, you know, and some people were coming for me and saying that, uh, well, this wouldn't make any scientific sense. And I was like, yeah, it's not a true story. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's great that you were able to be like, you know, sometimes I'm going to do research and figure out the scientific aspect of it. And sometimes I'm just going to let it be possible in the world of impossibilities. Yeah. <laughs> That's so great. Um, so we have all been listening to your audiobook, uh, all of us here on the podcast team and also the audience for the podcast. We've all been listening to your audiobook. Did you get a chance to listen to your audiobook? Were you involved in the process of choosing who the voice actor was going to be? What was your role in that? Um, so they, um, I, I was asked for my opinion on um, who would be the best narrator. Um, and luckily we all agreed <laughs> because I, yeah, I think she's fantastic. Um, yeah, she's really got the right, the voice and the intonation and everything. Um, I haven't listened to the entire audio book, um, which is because personally, I, I have a lot of anxiety about my writing. <laughs> so, um, if I go back and I start revisiting things, I'm worried I'm going to find stuff that I've mucked up. <laughs> so um but my my husband did listen to it and he thought it was it was really good so yeah well then in the part where you were able to contribute to the narration I know that they um send out a little clip for the possible narrators to read of your work so what was it like to hear your own words being read back to you oh, that was pretty incredible um yeah it's like because I haven't had any of my other books made into audio books. Um, so it's always just, you know, my voice in my head reading it, <laughs> but to, um, there's this other dimension that's added when you hear someone else's voice. Like it's, um, yeah, it was really, really an interesting experience and a very good one. 
Oh, good. That it, did it sound the way that you thought it would in your head? Yeah, I think it did. I think, um, yeah, it it did. It did come across some um, very, very close to how I was imagining it. So, yeah. That's so perfect. Well, you know, I always love to hear that because I feel like sometimes people say, oh, you know, maybe it didn't really or it didn't, but it it did sound really good or it's just interesting to hear it through a different lens. So I love that it really came across. You were able to write in a way that really expressed what you were thinking as you were writing it. So that's a very cool skill and very special as well. So speaking of other mediums in which you can consume your book, one of the questions that we on the podcast love to ask our authors is, if your book were going to be made into a movie, do you have ideas of who you would cast? Um, I have thought about this, but I, I don't really, um, I don't really know who I would cast. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Yeah. I think it would be awesome if it was made into a movie. Um, but I think I would probably leave those choices up to other people because that's totally um, fair. Yeah. That'd be more objective. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, in TV show too, you think it would it would be yeah. more of uh, someone else's kind of decision to make. Yeah. I almost feel like what I've heard from people sometimes too is it's almost kind of a muddy image what you have in your mind and you like it that yeah. way, not having yeah, a clear exactly. face because it, it's yours. Yeah. So I yeah, understand that. Yeah. That makes sense. Um. Well... Uh, I want to ask you more questions, but we've gone through most of the ones that I usually ask the authors. Um, So I want to ask you more than a little bit about your university experience. And yeah, what kind of tips would you, did you learn in university that you would want to teach maybe aspiring writers? Um, Yeah, university was, it was really good for me um, for from a writing point of view um and I think I really I really found myself there um and yeah I I I just I really enjoyed the whole experience it was three and a half years which is a long time but um, I, I felt like when I got there um like when I started versus when I finished I was I was much more focused um and um just able to you know sit down and type things on a laptop whereas beforehand I was just like oh ideas are coming from everywhere and (laughs) I don't know how to deal with them um but I think um one of the main things I learned at uni was kind of to take everything in life and use it as fodder for stories um I did have one really good lecturer um and he was taking us for this particular subject which was um it was kind of uh, cyber media, which is kind of the computer age. And, um, you know, um, it was all, almost sci-fi, but not um, not quite like that. And a lot of the other people in the writing course were like, why are we doing this subject? It's not about writing. Um, and the, the lecturer's response was brilliant. He was like, well, everything feeds your writing. You don't exist in a vacuum. So, um, yeah, I, I really took that to heart because, um, yeah, it, it was just a really good piece of advice. And, um, yeah, it, it makes you look at the things that happen in your life a different way. So, you know, you're in the midst of this big crisis where everything's going wrong and you're like, um, yeah, it's it's not good at the time, but I'm going to save bits of information about this <laughs> so that I can, um, you know, put them into a character or something like that. Um, and that also makes it a little bit easier to cope with stuff sometimes. It's like, um, you know, I can use this for my writing or my art or, you know, my creativity in some way. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that is really cool advice. I really love that. The idea that you can use anything to kind of channel that into your art is really, really special and cool. I'm wondering what is there any message that you hope that people take away from your book? Um, I think most of my books have a kind of um, some form of environmental message um, because I really do, do feel passionate about caring for our environment. 
and making the world a better place for our children um, and future generations. Um, so I always hope that that comes across at least a little bit, um, but I don't want to pound it into people because, I mean, I want, I want people to be conscious of it, but um, also, I mean, we've got to live our lives and be happy and sure. <laughs> stuff like that. Balance so. it in a way that feels natural to you. and Exactly, yeah. Sure. Uh, do you do other environmental activism of any kind? It seems like it's something that's very important to you. Yeah. Um, when I was younger, I used to attend a lot of protests. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was very... I was supportive of the activism side of things, though I never got personally involved myself. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, um, now that I've got kids, that's not really something I can, <laughs> I can do. Um, but yeah, I still, I sign a lot of petitions. Um, you know, I'm talking, still talking to um, some of the activist groups. Um, and yeah, but I mean, I also, um, now that I'm older, I'm also kind of, um, it, you want to, um, you don't want it to be an overwhelming influence in people's lives because, um, you know, we, we still have to live. And I think also um, we have to live cohesively. So, um, yeah, a lot of the, the violence and stuff that does happen with activism is, um, it's not something that I, I can um agree with anymore (laughs) um so yeah i i think that uh eventually we'll get to a place where we are um much more in tune with our environment um and i think that will come a a lot more naturally so yeah i i love that perspective and i agree i think that more and more people are becoming conscious of it so it's easier for people to say, oh, I'm going to make this small choice to just contribute positively or, you know, stop contributing as negatively (laughs) to the environment. (laughs) And and sometimes it just takes a bunch of people making those small choices to make a big change. So that's really special and cool. And and I appreciate, you know, as someone who I'm in a similar boat where I like to be environmentally conscious, but I'm working on finding a balance between that and also living a life that works for me and my best interest. And I think yeah. that it is important. And I think more and more people are just more open to yeah, that, which is so great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had mentioned earlier that uh, you have a new book coming out, New Eden, which is this fall, I believe, right? Fall of 2023 is when New Eden yeah, is coming right, out. Yeah. Oh, so exciting. And um, yeah, so they are obviously on this starship. And then I always butcher this pronunciation. Is it Seiki? How you pronounce the starship? Yeah, Se- yeah that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Starship Seiki to get to New Eden. This is where our ultimate destination is. I feel like I want to assume that it is a continuation of the adventures of Kim and the whales, Adonai and and some of the other whales on the ship. What uh, what can you tell us about New Eden? Um, So basically, New Eden is the planet that they're traveling to. So, um, yeah, these are the events that take place when they get there. Um, yeah, so um, introducing the whales into their new home um, and uh, a bit more of um, Kim and Ren's romantic relationship. <laughs> um, yeah, but, of course, everything doesn't go to plan um, and there are other forces that don't want this to happen. So... Yes, as we know, and as yeah. you know, we've had to experience a lot through this, the through Under the Heavens, through the first book, we got to see a little bit of uh, Kim's renegade lifestyle. Yeah. So that'll be so cool to be able to see a little bit more of that. Um, before we let you go, Ruth, what are you reading right now? Um, right now, um, I just finished a young adult book called Happy Head. Um, which is kind of a, a um, 
I want to say it's dystopian, but it's not really set in the future. Um, but it's very much about um, young people um, having to deal with uh, like um, with kind of mental illness challenges. Um, and yeah, it was really good. Like it, it really, um, really struck a chord with me. So yeah, it was sometimes those are book. oh god sometimes those are my favorite books the, the ones that they pull at your heartstrings a little bit and really make you think seriously about the world so I love that and yeah. I'm glad that you enjoyed the book that's so great um well mm -hmm. as we are wrapping up Ruth where can we find you where can our audience find you um I'm most active on Facebook um and also um, I'm trying to do a bit more of Instagram. Um, yeah, Facebook is the main one, but Instagram also. Um, Great. What are your handles? Yeah. Um, Ruth Fox Author. Perfect. Amazing. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on the podcast. It was so lovely talking to you. Yeah, it was great talking to you too. Amazing. And to the listeners at home, you can find Under the Heavens and very soon, New Eden coming fall of 2023 in print, audiobook, and ebook editions on our website, camcatbooks.com, or wherever books are sold. You can find Camcat Unwrapped on all major podcast platforms or watch us on our YouTube channel. And make sure you follow us on social media at Camcat Books. Thank you all so much for tuning in and unwrapping another one of our books to live in with me. My name is Jess, and I will see you all next time here on CamCat Unwrapped.